Uh, Andy Coronius, the CEO and Managing Director with SmartSat CRC. It's great to have you back on with Australia in Space TV. I'm delighted. Uh, last time we spoke was in Avalon. It was. Um, and so this time you've got a, a new chorus announcement. We have. Uh, and we've got uh, a ground station uh, behind you now. So maybe we... introduce us to Chorus. Absolutely. Yeah. Chorus is a, uh, a three and a half year research uh, R&D journey by our partners. We have a number of partners, universities as well as, um, as, well as industry, but particularly also the Defence Science and Technology Group. Yep. And in fact, they have been leading a lot of this work together with EOS, elect Electro Optics uh, Systems, EM Solutions, um, uh, Shoal, and um, also um, uh, Lyrebird Antennas. As you can see, that is yes. a, a, an antenna term. Well, I'm going to really test you now. What does CORUS stand for? What's the acronym? Yeah, CORUS is the Compact Hybrid Optical radio frequency RF um, uh, user segment so chorus it's an acronym yes uh, basically tries not twice it actually has uh, managed yes. to merge optical communications with radio frequency communications most of our communications certainly military and otherwise is very much radio frequency yes. but radio frequency is quite vulnerable particularly if you're trying to tap uh, into it to intercept it yes. or to jam, jam it, it. Uh, you can listen to it much easier. Optical communications is actually much more difficult for you to uh, intercept it. And if you do, we know that you've intercepted Got it. it. Yeah. But also, optical communications has much higher data rates than radio frequency has. So in today's world, when everything is more video, more images, whether it's communications or entertainment, then the optical is what we want. But optical doesn't always work. If there is a cloud on the, on the way, because we're talking about satellite communications, yep. then the optical will fall apart. So what this system does, it allows you to automatically switch from one wow. to the other. So if there is cloud, snow, rain, and so on, that disrupts the communication, automatically you switch into the RF, the radio frequency. Does that impact on bandwidth? I take it there's bandwidth yes, that the, changes there? Yes, the bandwidth will change. Yep. You'll be, you'll be able to transmit less data, yep. but you will not disrupt the communication yep. so link. reliability improves, Reliability, right? very much reliability. Yep. And of course, for military communications, it reduces the probability of someone, a, a, you know, a hostile actor yep. actually intercepting your, your data. So who would be the ultimate end users of this? Of this is it does it's not obviously not just defense but it is not just defense yeah. but the first kind of prototype would be tested with defense our yeah. uh, Australian Defense Force uh, but also it's also an opportunity for us to contribute to our allies as well yeah. because this is world leading so so this is a great Australian technology giving to others as well so potential export uh, uh, absolutely export base, right. absolutely it could be a new class of terminals yeah. because they these terminals combine both usually what you have is a telescope and you have a, a radio antenna yeah now you bring them together and you automate the process of switching from one from the other so it really is a hardware based system. it's hardware and software but right. primarily hardware yeah uh, but also the, another application would be say a, a, a cruise ship yeah. Because in cruise ships, you need satellite communications because when you're in the ocean, you don't get a lot of communications. Yeah. But you also want high, f high bandwidth, high data rates because you can watch videos, you can watch Netflix and so on, yeah. uh, and you can do that with optical. So it can be mobile as well, and it's self-tracking it on target. Definitely. In fact, yeah. one of the applications would probably be on Navy ships. Yeah. yeah. And this is the actual size, yes. or is this, this a model? This is a full engineering it's pretty small. model. The footprint's very small. Yeah, it's actually the full size of the uh, of the terminal. Right. And yeah. so, from a program perspective for SmartSat CRC, is there still research underway, or what's yes. your roadmap now? The, actually, this terminal now is ready for prototyping. Right. For for testing, it's already been demonstrated at Edinburgh Air Force uh, Base up here in uh, in Adelaide, in South Australia. Uh, but we are now basically going to a more rigorous testing of it, and then after that, it's full for production. Well, it's yeah. sitting right behind us, so you're, yeah. you're halfway there already. We are. We are. We're very Coronis. excited about it. Look, absolutely, and I love always the passion that you bring. Thank you so uh, much to the sector <laughs> as well. And it's wonderful to have you back on Australia Thank you, Space Chris. TV. Thank you, Thank you. Appreciate it.